this video talks about using the Octave software, and most of the video is applicable to MATLAB because Octave and MATLAB are syntactically identical in most cases. The only thing that's different in this presentation is this slide for installing Octave. So Octave is a free and open source software package, and it provides high-level mathematics computation. So you can download Octave for Windows at this link here, and it should work in the PDF. Or if it doesn't work, then just go to SourceForge and find the latest version of Octave. If you're in Linux, then it's a lot easier. And in order to use the programs that we're going to write for Octave, they're called scripts and functions, then you'll want to have your working directory in the search path. So you can use the command add path and then in quotation marks the path to the directory uh, that has your Octave files in it. And this just details the process for making that path persistent so you don't have to keep calling add path every time you uh, start Octave. So you can just edit this file. Um, where is it? Octave RC, which is located here. And what you do is just add this command to that file where you replace foo with the path to your directory. And here's another link to documentation for Octave. And there's also the help function inside if you want help with a built in function. So, really basic, we're going to be using variables. This is no different from C. The declaration is, is simpler because we don't have to declare a, a variable type, a data type, if we don't want to. Variables in Octave can be uh, real and complex scalars and matrices, character strings, so that would be an array of characters, um, data structures, and cell arrays. So these are sort of more abstract data types. And here's an example of declaring a, a variable and assigning a value to it. We can declare a variable and use it in the same line in Octave or MATLAB. I'll just say Octave, but MATLAB is the same thing. So here we're assigning the value of 6 to a new variable called x. And after we type a command, Octave is going to give us the result of that. So it's going to assign a value to a variable and it will show us the variable and its new value. We can add a semicolon to the end of the line and it will suppress the output. So after this line, we still have a variable x with a value 6, but Octave hasn't shown the output for that because of the semicolon. And if we don't specify a variable, Octave will automatically create the variable ands and assign the value of the output to that variable. So for example, if we just type 7 plus 3 and hit enter, then Octave has created a variable called ands and it has assigned the value 10 to that variable. The clear command is useful. So here in these three lines, we created three variables and assigned values to them. And just to show that, I typed in x and hit enter, and it showed me the value for x. And then use the command clear, and then provide it with a variable name. And that will delete that variable from memory. So then if I type in x again, we get an error that x is undefined. We can also use clear all, which will clear all the variables. So you might want to do this at the beginning of a, if you're using a script, which is just a sort of a notepad where you can write a bunch of commands and then call that script and it'll just execute those commands. So instead of having to type them in one by one over and over again, you can edit a .m file and then Octave will read those, the lines of that script as separate commands. To Octave. So before you run a script, you might want to um, use the clear all command in order to erase the values of some variables that you had in memory before so that you're not mistakenly using old values of variables or something like that. Anyway, the clear command clears the variables from memory. Here are the basic operators in MATLAB, and these work for scalars and matrices. 
and we have the standard operator precedence rule. So here's a question. Which of these two is the larger value? Or said another way, after each of these, the variable ands is going to have some value assigned to it. Which one is going to give you a larger value for ands? Okay, it's the second one. 2 times 6 plus 13, or the sum of 13 and 2 multiplied by 6. So I guess 90 versus 25. The help function is useful. If you need to know how to use one of the built-in functions, you can just type help and then the name of that function. For example, this is what you get when you type help costs. You get information about the cosine function. MATLAB has random num number generators, which are useful for simulations. And you can have different types of random numbers produced, but simulations off often add noise to a process to simulate real behavior. And that's one area you would want to use a random number generator for. So the RAND command will generate a, a real number between zero and one. But what if you wanted to get a range for numbers in a different range? Say you wanted random numbers between 50 and 100. How could you use the RAND function to do that? I'll give you a second to think about it. You could type, well, 50 times RAND. So if you typed 50 times RAND, that would give you random numbers between 0 and 50. And then if you added 50 to that product, then you would get random numbers between 50 and 100. You can also use the RAND function to create arrays or, or uh, matrices. So RAND 3, 2 will give you a 3 by 2 matrix of random numbers from 0 to 1. And then another function, RAND i, gives you random integers. So in this example, we're generating random integers in the range from one to five and populating a one by two matrix with those. So the answer here, and this time we ran it would be two and four. So we have a one by two matrix. That brings us to matrices and vectors. But we can explicitly declare a vector in this way, and this is a row vector. If we have spaces or commas between the elements, they'll be in a row. We could also automatically generate a vector using the colon operator. So it, it iterates, and by default, it's going to iterate with a value of 1. So if we just use 1 colon 5, assign that to the variable vec, we would get a row vector of elements from 1 to 5, and each element is one more than the previous one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can change the, the iterator value um, just by inserting a third argument in between the, the two limits. So vec. 1 colon 2 colon 5 gives you a vector of numbers from 1 to 5 with a uh, difference of 2 between each element. So 1, 3, 5 would be the answer then, or the result. Lint space is a nice function to create elements of a vector in a given range that are evenly spaced. So if you If you know you want a certain number of elements in a given range, lint space will automatically generate evenly spaced elements in that range. Um, for example, if we wanted to plot um, values from 0 to 100, but we wanted 1,000 points, we could say 1, 100, and then 1,000. And that would generate 1,000 points evenly spaced. That was a bad example. But anyway, um, wind space gives you that evenly spaced vector. So it's different from the colon operator in that the colon operator has the same spacing. And so the number of elements is determined by the range and the spacing, whereas in lens space, the spacing is determined by the range and the number of elements. So they sort of complement each other. A column vector to get a new row 
we use a semicolon between the elements. So this is how you can explicitly declare a column vector or an octave. And then a matrix. You, you'd write um, elements separated by spaces for each row, and then each row is separated by a semicolon. And again, we had this vector V that we create, or matrix V that we created. And if we want to access one element of it, we use parentheses and then the index row column. So for example, the two, three element of V is going to be you know, the second row, the third column, so that would be six. So we've assigned the value of the two, three element of V to the variable X. So that skipped a lot by accident. And one handy operator, again, is the colon operator. And we can use that whenever we're referring to an element of a matrix to refer to the entire row. Or if we put it after the comma, it would be the entire column. So here we're saying, I'm sorry, the entire column, meaning every row. So here we have every row, the third column of V. So that would be a column vector with elements 3, 6. So see, we have all the rows and the third column of V. And we assign that to Y, so now Y is a vector, three, six. And any function that Octave performs on a scalar, it can also take a matrix as an argument. So for example, create this vector X using length space. So from zero to five, we have five elements. And then we find the side of all those uh, values and we can just call the sign function and pass the vector x as an argument to it. And so then we'll, the our, our return will be a vector. So the first element of y is sine of the first element of x. Second element of y is sine of the second element of x. The last element of y is the sine of the last element of x. And then we have three. Uh, Topics left. So matrix math. Here's an example of scalar multiplication. So we have a scalar, this number two, and we have a matrix that we declared using the Rand I function. And we can multiply the matrix by a scalar, and Octave will multiply every element in that matrix by the scalar. We could also do this for addition. So instead, if we set C plus M, then the resulting M2 would be 866774. So we can combine scalar and matrix uh, operations, and then they will just be done to every element in the matrix. Matrix multiplication is some of the same operator as scalar multiplication, so the asterisk. For example, create this two by three matrix and a three by one vector, multiply them, um, A times X, would give us this two by one vector. So you just got to make sure that when you do um, matrix multiplication that your dimensions match. Here's an example where we have not matching dimensions. So we've got a three by two matrix and we try to multiply that by a three by one. And we get an error that the size of the matrices don't match. So three by two, you can't multiply by three by one. And finally, one thing that could come in useful whenever we're working on this stuff in class and you have to turn in your output, you can use the diary function. And what it does is it keeps a log of your work in Octave. So everything that you type in, that is every command that you enter, and every output that Octave sends to the screen will be written to a text file. And that text file is just called diary, unless you give it a different file name. And that's another command. But the two commands are diary on and diary off. So diary on, it'll start recording all your input and output. And then diary off, it will close that file. And then you can open it or in a text editor or whatever you want to do. So this video just shows a little introduction to Octave. And if you don't have MATLAB on your computer or if you just want a free and open source alternative, then you can follow the instructions on the first slide 
to download and install Octave on your Windows computer. 